human feet. You know, those sometimes smelly things at the end of your legs? Yeah, those! Well, those are adapted to support us while walking upright. So the bones and ligaments in there are quite rigid. But some people have floppier feet that might indicate our ancestry. A study in nearly 400 people showed that about 1 out of 13 had them like that. Primates use their feet like we use our hands. They climb trees with agility. So they need to have floppy feet to do it efficiently. But humans from 2 million years in the past also had less rigid feet. Scientists believe studying people with this rare bone structure may help understand how ancient humans walk. And also whether this floppiness actually helps in climbing too. Now our height, the shape of our body, and skin color depend on where our ancestors used to live. But we can adapt to new conditions even within our own lifespan. For example, if you move from plains to the mountains, you'll eventually develop more red blood cells to compensate for the lack of oxygen. And naturally, if you move from a colder climate to a hotter and sunnier one, your skin will get pigmented to adapt. Now, a second pair of arms would come in handy in a lot of situations. But an extra pair of fingers might be helpful too. About one in every 500 people is born with six digits on either hand. In most cases, the extra fingers are considered useless and removed. But research has shown that those who've left them could do lots of everyday things with just one hand, like tying their shoelaces or playing video games with game pads. Okay, how many fingers am I holding up now? About 1 in 25,000 people are born with the thumbs on their hands having three flanges instead of the usual two, giving their hands a very extraordinary look. And when it happens in combinations with six fingers, which isn't too rare by the way, the picture is even more cryptic. Such a condition doesn't bring much discomfort. In fact, some actions are even easier done with a thumb that has an extra flange. Like thumbing your nose, perhaps. It's been believed for a long time that a person could distinguish more than 10,000 smells. Some research done not long ago showed that people were able to distinguish more than a trillion smells. We also remember them better than anything else, and smells can even evoke some distant memories. Like with Grandpa and the big baked bean party when you were a kid. We can accidentally digest small objects such as plastic items, glass, coins, and many other small objects. They'll make their way through the digestive tract within 48 hours. And there's even a man who managed to eat a whole airplane. Now, it took him years though, but little by little, he finished his metal meal with no trouble at all. I had a joke here about passing a landing gear, but yeah, I'll skip that one. Now, every person has their unique smell that can't be confused with anyone else's. It's exactly the same mechanism that allows other animals to find members of their family in packs and distinguish them from strangers. Still, if you have an identical twin, you will both have almost the same smell. Scientists found that body odors of identical twins are 10 times more similar than those of unrelated people. Unfortunately, a well-trained dog would still easily distinguish you two. Now, most people have three types of cones in their eyes, allowing us to see millions of colors. Women typically see more shades. But sometimes, they see so much more that they're literally unable to comprehend the difference. That's thanks to a fourth cone in their eyes that enhances their vision a hundredfold. And what's more, the number of women born with this extra cone is about 12%. But only a few of them can actually use it because in most cases, it remains inactive. Now, imagine falling from the roof of a 10-story building and getting away with a few bruises and scratches, but no broken bones whatsoever. Such a genetic anomaly was discovered back in 1994, and it is associated with the LRP5 gene. It makes a person's bones about 8 times denser than normal, which basically makes them almost indestructible. There's a whole extended family in Connecticut that has this mutation, and all 20 members of it have extraordinarily dense bones. Scientists who did research of the blood samples of this family say they have the strongest skeletons in the world. Many people think that a cleft chin is a sign of a strong and independent character. But it's really a gene mutation, which results when the bones or muscles in the lower jaw don't fuse completely during development inside the womb. Just like many other anomalies, it's hereditary. Which means, yes, you can blame your parents. 
However, if a person has a cleft chin, it doesn't necessarily mean that their offspring will have it too, because environmental factors in the womb or the presence of modifier genes, genes that influence other genes, can prevent it. There are no two identical brains in the world. Brain structure highly depends on conditions in which it develops and grows. And so, we all have something individual to us even on a biological level. And just like your fingers, your tongue too has a unique print on it that won't be like any other in the world. Nah, let's not compare tongues. A less impressive but not less rare condition is the so-called double crown. A crown is that patch of hair on top of your head that goes in a spiral. It's pretty hard to miss if you have short hair, especially because it's the hardest part to smooth down. People normally have one, but there are individuals unlucky enough to have two and double the smoothing trouble. Still, some believe having a double crown is, on the contrary, a sign of good luck or even high intelligence. Mm. On a similar note, do you ever wake up and look at your tousled hair with frustration? And now imagine having this disheveled look forever and not being able to do anything about it. It's called the uncombable hair syndrome. Your hair's always sticking out every which way, and no amount of water or hair gel can tame it. Heterochromia makes your eyes two different colors, say one hazel and the other blue. It has to do with the levels of melanin in your body, a pigment that affects the colors of your skin, hair, and, yes, your eyes. There's also partial heterochromia, which is only a part of one of your eyes is differently colored. It's not too common in humans, but I'll bet you've seen it in dogs, huskies in particular. This breed is naturally predisposed to this condition, and it looks super cool. Now, the rarest genetic condition there probably is, called the golden blood, can be a lifesaver for millions of people. There are just 40 known carriers of this blood type in the world. They don't have any Rh blood cell antigens, which means anyone can accept their blood, even those with extremely rare blood types. And although their blood isn't golden in color, it's certainly worth more than just gold. Now, turn your arm palm up on some flat surface and touch your pinky and thumb together. Now, look at your wrist. Do you see a muscle getting tense under your skin there? If you don't, that's okay. It only means you're in about 10% of people who don't have the palmaris longus. It's a muscle that scientists believe used to be useful for hanging and gripping in our ancestors. In modern humans, though, it has no real value, so we're evolving to drop it altogether. About one half to 1% of people in the world have an extra hole next to their ears that serves no clear purpose. And it is pretty useless, although not dangerous either. It's just a sign that your ancestors used to have gills. According to estimations, only about 6% of the world's population can solve the Rubik's Cube. Despite it being just a skill like any other, most of us have to learn it, either by watching tutorials on the web or asking someone for help. And only a small percentage of people can actually solve it on their own. If you're one of them, you're a truly rare individual. Raising your eyebrows in surprise is a common thing, And raising just one to express skepticism isn't rare either. But it depends on which eyebrow you usually raise. If you can do this trick with either eyebrow, you're actually unique. Since your eyebrows are controlled by muscles, you can train yourself to raise either of them at will. But it often takes time and conscious effort. Moving your ears is about the same. Not so many people can do it. And there are even fewer of those who can wiggle just one ear instead of both. It's an ancient feature that dates back to our primate ancestors who used their ears to control their surroundings. And of course, it's still present in most mammals. Now, while most people around the world are right-handed, being a lefty puts you in a minority. That's not surprising. But a really remarkable thing is ambidexterity. Only about 1% of the world's population can use both their hands equally well meaning they could hold a spoon, pick their nose, or write in their notebook switching hands with no trouble at all. How useful would that be?